You know what, guys? The world sucks. Like, I knew the world sucks. Like, I think, like, almost everybody has that, like, idea, like, when they're, like, the early teenagers or, like, early adults. When, like, they get their, like, when they have their first bad breakup, when they, like, enter college, when they start the workforce, or when they have, like, their first, like, crappy part-time job. They, they all have that, ex that awakening of, like, oh, my gosh. The, the, the world kind of sucks compared to, you know, sitting on the couch and watching television all day. But, like, it's not, like, that exact part. It's the part that, like, there's an entire world around me that sucks. Not just, like, my life. Because, like, comparatively, my life is fine, okay? I like my life. I, 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 I appreciate the, the, the my life, okay? But it just upsets me to know that, like... There's so many things surrounding my life that suck, you know? I knew this before, right? Like, I've had, I've had crappy part-time jobs before. I've had crappy part-time jobs worse than this, you know? Fudging, but that was, like, at, like, not, at, a, like, a random-ass, like, nursery for, like, flowers. A flower nursery, by the way, because I, I tell people I worked at a nursery, and they're like, oh, yeah, you feed bottles to babies, and I'm like... Not that kind of nursery. <laughs> a flower nursery. But, you know, that's just, like, a random, like, nursery. Only, like, you know, moms go to there. But, like, this whole, this, this, this effing experience of going, working at a fast food place. A place that, like, everybody goes all the time because this is, like, the world that we live in. Not just America. Because, you know, you, you go to, you know, other parts of the world. Like, McDonald's is a worldwide success place, you know? The entire world goes, eats at this fast food, pl these fast food places, right? So it's like, it's in my face. It's like, it's things that, that I have supported personally, right? Which leads me to my story that I haven't, like, already hinted at is that, uh, I, I worked at a fast food place. And I know there, there. I've again, I've worked other places before. It's just that this fast food place has shown me exactly how awful these fast food places are. And I'm not saying I didn't know before, right? It's not like I didn't know. Like we all saw the documentaries. We're like pretend you, you know, you pretend that you didn't see them. We all saw them, and you know all the other like actual documented sources of these places being terrible and like obvious reasoning because it's a fast food place like if you're gonna have things be fast there has to be a consequence there has to be some overworked employees but there's a difference between knowing that nike uses child slaves and actually going to the sweatshops and seeing the faces of the suffering children you know it's a, it's a it's a different experience so we're going to start from the top. We're going to start from the top, okay? We're going to start with the reason why I became a burger surf is <laughs> because, you know, I already have a job. I, I, I worked my butt off to get in, pay for, and graduate from a college. And I got, um, you know, an out-of-college job, like a, like a, a, you know, the place that I'm going to. I'm going to be, I'm gonna be uh, in Japan. It'll be great. It'll be fun. <laughs> However, effing, uh, when I applied for this job, they're like, um, okay, so, you know, uh, so for some startup costs, you know, cause you're going to be living on the other side of the planet and, uh, there's going to, you're not going to get a paycheck for a while. So, you know, you should bring like all this money. And I'm like, I don't have all this money. I, I don't have, I didn't have enough money for college. So like, how am I going to pay for this thing? So I'm like, well, poop. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this PG. I don't know why, like a like a drunken rant is, I'm trying to keep a drunken rant PG, but you know, poop. Uh, so uh, I'm leaving a fudging in August, uh, not August, yes, August. August is like the third or whatever, the fudge. Fourth, eighth, seventh, I don't remember. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I graduate the college and then I'm like, well, if I want to have money to pay for this, I should look for a job. So I, so I do, and then I get the burger surf job. So I spend forever looking, because, you know, looking for a job is not easy. You know, like, my uh, boomer mom over there is like, oh, just 
just fill out some applications and show up and, you know, come, you'll come home with a job. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure when you were looking for a job, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> Maybe your grandparents, but you know, nowadays you, you gotta, you gotta spend like 20 hours filling out a, a personality survey online to, and they'll like ask you like, oh, if you saw an employee stealing something, even if it was only a dollar, would you rat them out or something? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I guess. Why not? Like, I just think like, well, what would a manager want me to do? And then let's answer it how they think I want. It. I don't understand how, why they use those things that they don't work. <laughs> Because, you know, you, you're going to lie on them anyway. You already lie on your resume. So, like, why would you, like, not lie in the personality quiz? So, anyway, I get the call. I show up at the arranged meeting spot. They're like, okay, uh, can you come in at this time on this day? And I'm like, cool. Well, they, they said this day, this, this time, this day. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I have something planned that day. Can we make it this day? And they're like, sure. Anyway, point is, we have a prearranged meeting spot. So I show up, they're like, okay, sit down and wait for your interview. I sit there for like two hours <laughs> and I just, I sit there and I wait, you know, I actually, I don't know if it was a total of, it was a total of like two and a half hours because it was like two when I walked in, it was like almost six when I left. I'm not doing the math on that. It might've been close to five. Anyway. <laughs> Because, like, they're not just doing... I've, I've ranged this interview at this time. Because I'm like, okay, you're free. I'm free. We're cool. We can do this interview. And they're like... There's, like, three people in front of me also doing interviews. So I just have to sit there and look, watch them do another interview from the other side of the store. <laughs> so, for, first, I'm wa I walk in the front door. This job is already wasting my effing time. And then I have to do this, like... It's okay, listen. So they finally they they get to me and they're like, "Okay, uh we don't have your like file. We don't have your application on file. Can you go to those computers and do it again?" And I'm like, "Fine. I better goddamn get this job." So I go over there and I do it. Cuz like whatever, I'm like I don't even I probably not going to get this job because well, I don't know, because I feel like at that point, like, why would they make me bother if I'm don't, not going to get the job anyway? But, you know, you know how they go. They would, they, I could easily see them being making me sit there for, like, 20 hours and then not giving me the job. But they gave me the job. <laughs> They're like, okay, fine. I'm like, whatever. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good guy. I got some, I got some stuff on re my resume. I'm, a, I'm a good at taking interviews. I'm good at telling people what they want to hear, you know? I've, I've grown up a very socially inept. I was looking back at some of my old videos where I was walking around my apartment complex screaming at birds. That was, that, was a, that was a good video and a lot of my early YouTube stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I think that in combination with the fact that I didn't have any friends, I think I might have had some social problems growing up. I definitely, growing up, I had some, you know, uh, learning disability markers thrown on me here and there. Most notably ADHD, which, like, I don't even... I think everyone was getting diagnosed with ADHD, like, in the early 2000s. I don't think that was, like, unique to me. I'm surprised no one called me autistic. But I think uh, most people would consider, like, if you f you're you full-blown autistic, there'd be... There's, like, some early signs, you know? But I think everyone, to some extent, is on the autism scale. Anyway, I'm getting off track. What was I talking about? Anyway, yeah, so uh, I had to learn social skills from the ground up. So I just end up being, you know, very good at telling people what they want to hear because I can reverse engineer it in my head. <laughs> because I had to do that in order to, like, make any, like, social connections at all. So anyway, uh, so after that, like, three hours of waiting around and then doing the interview and then waiting around uh, and then I got the job, they're like, okay, I had to do this two more times. So I came in two more days to do like documents and like fill out some stuff. And I'm like, and of course they all scheduled it on the same time, the same day. <laughs> so we were, they were just like going around to like three different people trying to do all these things. It was not a fast and speedy process, ironically, because it's a fast food place. But I finally go and then they're like, 
I think this was on Thursday, so I'm trying to get the timeline right. Thursday, it was like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were these three days. And then Thursday, they're like, okay, orientation's at 11. Uh, you can pick up your uniform then. And I'm like, cool. And then I leave. And I don't know what I'm I – I, I don't expect anything out of this orientation because all they said was orientation's at 11. See you then. And the papers that I signed – like outlined a two-day orientation of four hours each so i'm like okay i'll probably i'll get out of there at three so i planned something to do that night which was in retrospect not a good idea that was my water bottle by the way <sighs> fudge i've never done a standing rant before this is this is new this is half the reason why i wanted to do this is because i've never done a standing rant and i just you know it's fun it's fun you know anyway so they're like hold on i need to pull up my notes <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. I talked about that. Uh, so I show up at 11, and uh, they give me my uniform, and I change in my uniform. And I, like, I don't remember what I did with my shirt. I think I – I might have shown up with the uniform. I don't remember. Anyway. <laughs> because they might have given me the uniform the day before. No, no, no. They definitely gave me the uniform the day of, and I had to, like, throw my sh the shirt in the car. <laughs> I had to run out to the car and throw the shirt in the car and then come back. <laughs> And, of course, they're like, oh, we don't have any good shirts, so here's this. It was like a T-shirt instead of, like, the collar shirt or whatever. They give me my hat, and then they they show me, like, vaguely where everything is. They were like, oh, quickly, like, oh, yeah, that's where this is. That's where this is. That's where this is. Here are the extra cups. Here's the extra salt. Blah, blah, blah. Here's the register. Here's how to use the register. Have fun. And they leave me on there for, like, six hours. <laughs> they show me the absolute basics of how to use the register and then leave me on it for six hours and i understand the logic in this because they're like well the best way to teach them is to just do it and like i'm not necessarily complaining because that's kind of how i learn i'm kind of bad with taking directions i'm not bad with taking directions but like i need directions and then i need to do it in order to like fully f understand how to do something right uh, they did not give me full directions. They were just like, here is vaguely how the cash register works. Uh, have fun. And then I got into trouble several times because I'm like not doing specific things that I need to do that they just didn't tell me to do. <laughs> the other employees already hate me because I'm a jackass who doesn't know anything. <laughs> and I think at one point they like switched me from like the like the drive through window to uh, like just picking up the cash from the drive through window and then giving them their food to the front counter and then they still didn't tell me anything <laughs> and even now even like it was like it was like over a week it was a little over a week that i did this for reasons that will become apparent later <laughs> so it was like over a week that i did this and i still did not know what the fudge i was doing which is like obvious but like not to everybody else, because to everybody else, I was still a jackass who didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and then, so that was, so yeah, they didn't tell me, like, how long my shift was going to be. They just said, show up at 11, and I stayed there for six hours. And then halfway through, I was like, hey, I'm getting kind of tired and going, and I kind of need to go to the bathroom. When do we get a break? And then they're like, uh, you don't get a break. <laughs> they said No. They were like, if you work for under eight hours, you don't get a break. You, If you work for eight hours, you get a half hour break. But if you under that, then you don't. And I'm like, what? Every place I've worked since then has given me a break. Yes, even the, ner even the flower job, which was worse, <laughs> even gave me a break. But they're like, no. And it's like just standing on my feet for hours in new shoes because they made me buy new shoes like new non-slip shoes which was like a requirement so i was trying to break in these shoes and i was just standing it was awful <laughs> and it was terrible and then the next and then they give me my schedule for the next week and i find out that i have to work the next day for eight hours and i'm like Oh dear, that is that is that is that is a thing, dude. I was not prepared for that, you know. Like, and you know they can just do that. That's crazy, right? There's that is absolutely like insane that that can just like happen. That you just have to live your life. Because my whole big point here is that like obviously like I'm a spoiled white boy complaining about having to do manual labor. <laughs> I'm mad because there are people who need to pay the bills 
and feed children with a crappy fast food job. And so that's kind of awful to just throw that on somebody. To just be like, you cannot make plans because you might have to work for like eight hours the next day, you know? And that's like, that's not in a complete day. And it could be like any time, any time during your availability. Sometimes it was like in the morning. Sometimes it was like to close. Sometimes it was like open for eight hours and it was like clo close eight hours until close. And it's awful. It's just awful. Cause like the schedule came out Saturday morning <laughs> and then it was like, the scatter the schedule for Sunday onwards came out Saturday morning, so you had at most twenty four hours notice if you like woke up at the crack of dawn and then went there at like as soon as they posted the schedule. <laughs> of course, you know sometimes they just don't post the schedule until like halfway through the day, so you know <laughs> sometimes you have less than twenty four hours to to be prepared. Anyway, uh, the fudge I want to say about my eight hour shift. Okay, so four hours in, I, uh, I'm i like, okay, yesterday they said you work eight hours, you get a, a half-hour lunch break, and I get half-off food at this crappy place. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the Burger King because I wanted to rant about specifically Burger King later. <laughs> and so, like, and I'm like, okay, Burger King food's, like, not that great, but I can get something. It'll be, it'll be fun. It, it'll be hard eight hours, but, you know, I'll get a break halfway through. I'll get a second wind. It'll be great. Uh, so four hours, like, I think it was like five hours in, because I was like, I was new, and I was trying to be polite and not be like, oh, I'm lazy, I want a break. But it was five hours in, and I eventually just asked the manager, uh, when do breaks work? I've worked, I've set scheduled to work eight hours, and I've already worked five. And she said no. <laughs> she said no. She said, I don't have anyone to replace you, no. And apparently this is just legal. You can, I, I don't know if it's legal. I know it's legal to, to not give you like a 15 minute break for less than eight hours. But the fact that like, even if it is illegal, what, it, what am I, what am I to do? You know, again, the hypothetical, not me, a white privileged college educated boy, <laughs> but like someone who is trying to pay their rent with this money and who is dying and doesn't have a, an option like you know, like, what if if it is illegal and they just say no, you don't get a break? What do you what do you what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You just gonna are you gonna quit? Are you gonna sue them? Are you gonna call the police? <laughs> so there's just no there's just no option. So I'm just like, okay, I guess no break for me. In. And I'm like, and that I've already been working for five hours, and I'm like, you know what? F it. I'm I'm gonna go at least to the bathroom. You know, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to at least, like, run off to go to the bathroom because I've been, like, not for eight hours. And again, not exclusive to this job specifically. You know, there's been times where uh, previously uh, my employers have given me crap about taking a break, but I've never just, like, I've never been, like, straight up lied to about it, you know? Like, and that, like, that, th I think that was the point where I'm like, oh, no, this is, this is, this is, this is what, this is going to be special. This is going to be a special time. That was, there was that moment right there where I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> this is, this is, this is quickly turning into, into quite a big ordeal. <laughs> Cause like, they're like, okay, I don't, they don't have anyone to replace me that day. And so the, with the assumption being like, okay, another day you can have a break, but like, if they can just say no and there's nothing I can do about it, there's nothing stopping them from never giving me any break. And breaks are important, guys. Breaks are important. There's thousands of studies you can look up about uh, the importance of breaks. Uh, the fact that the second wind exists, you know, because you sit down, you get, you have a nice break, and then you're like, okay, I'm more prepared for the work. I gotta, you know, gotta make up for all that I've missed in the last half hour, you know. <sighs> Fudge. And also, like, specifically with jobs like that, um, it's like a food place, right? So, like, you could take your break without even leaving work, right? Like, you could go there and use your employee discount, get some half price food, and then sit down and enjoy yourself and relax without technically leaving work, which is a huge, massive point of importance to having a positive emotional connection to your work. 
because for me that crappy ass effing Burger King was all was all 100% work hate awful. <laughs> there was never any point where I was happy to be there. You know, there was no, there was zero, there were zero minutes, zero seconds, zero milliseconds, zero frames <laughs> that I was okay there. You know, and I think that would have helped. Just one, just one, just one, just one. Would have been great. Would have been like sit down and be like, oh, you know, this place can be cool. This place can be friendly. This place can be chill, you know. But no, that's not how it goes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm looking for my notes. I forgot about this, dude. <laughs> this is this is when the story gets a little this is when the story gets a little off the rails, okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna warn you guys. This is when you're gonna get some exclusive uh insight to the workings of a fast food place. <laughs> So at this at this fast food place, there is a a timer that is timing every single car through the drive through, and I already knew this because like every time I go to a dry a fast food drive through, they always like are like okay, what do you what do you want? You want to eat this? You want to eat that? Okay, 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 cool. Here's your food. Go. And I'm like, okay, I guess I can kind of. They they are rushing me out the door because their their manager wants them to be fast, and they're always put under constant pressure. <laughs> Because it's a miserable job. But, like, I was like, okay, well, you know, it can't be that ridiculous. No, it is that ridiculous. It's that ridiculous. They, there was a literal timer. And not that just that there was a timer. That there, there, there was a timer that is comparing all of the Burger Kings in the area. And they're all in competition with themselves. And they're all like, oh, no, we got to do, do the drive through window faster because our times are getting lower. We're in second place. We gotta be in first place. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta chase after the carrot on the stick. But you wanna know something? There is no carrot on the stick. There is only lies and deceit. <laughs> Cause I asked. I'm like, why do you care so much for this drive-through time? And then they're like, oh yeah, cause the store gets like a bonus if we're number one for a while. And I'm like, are you getting that bonus? Are you an hourly employee getting that bonus? Or is the manager pocketing that bonus? Or is it like just... Because like going to the store is very vague and very like abstract and weird. Uh, and like I understand that like if your times get low enough, uh, the manager can specify someone and fire them. Because like that's also the nature of having a crappy fast food place is that you can just get fired for no reason. There's like, there's no contract you sign. There's no like, well, there was a contract you sign, but like, it's not binding. It's not like, you know, like I'm able to quit anytime. You're able to fire me anytime kind of thing. You know, it's not like an actual job where like the process of firing you that you have to like, it's like in like, cause like the, for the job in Japan, they're like, there's a very specific quantity for getting fired. You're like you're not, uh, you're not fit for the job. You're not. Uh, you get sick and are unable to do it, or like whatever. Again, not like super great. You know, that's why like kind of unions exist to like try to not get people fired for very vague reasons because like being unfit to do a job is very like debatable. But at other jobs, it's at least like it's more challenging to fire someone it's more of an ordeal because like if you're like specifically trained for something and to do something and go somewhere and do a thing that you've been trained to and not a lot of other people can then it's you have a lot more job security than like a fast food place where they can hire a new they can hire and train someone in like less than a week where was i going with this oh yeah the fast oh yeah the fast food timer <laughs> The drive through timer. That's where I was going with this. Um, so they're all in competition. And um, they all cheat. They all are cheaters and liars. <laughs> because this is why I'm not, like, mentioning anywhere specific. Because, like, if you really, like... If someone really wanted to, they could stalk and find me. But it's very, like... I, I try to not to make that easy for obvious reasons. Because I don't want to be murdered. <laughs> But, like, even if I murder, that's cool. But I think the worst thing that could happen is that, like, an employer would find this and then find out who I am and then be like, 
Oh, you said you didn't like Burger King and this video, and you did this under the name of Fireboy, and you know, but we know who you are, really. <laughs> but anyway, you all, better be safe than sorry. That's unlikely to happen, but better safe than sorry. But we're not gonna make, so we're not gonna make any names. Uh, the, but they're all liars and cheaters and schemers. Uh, so first of all, there's like a little button on the drive through window to, that says like that they that the customer has their food and has been served and I think it like affects the drive through timer or whatever and they push that as soon as that you can they lay they tell me to push it as soon as you can and also one of the funniest things that happened is like it was like late at night it was, this was during my second shift by the way it was like late at night and the we were already number one in the area so I don't know why they cared but we were already number one in the area and but the manager wanted the time lower and it was slow so what she does is she leaves the store gets in her car and starts doing laps around the drive through <laughs> like i'm not kidding <laughs> i'm like this is a thing that happens this is what people are driven to this is this is this is what this is the things that happen the, we just want to make numbers go down because a uh, biz, uh, faceless business suit guy would like it you know <laughs> Again, not attacking anyone. I'm just like, this is crazy that, like, this is what we're driven to, you know? So she's making laps around the uh, parking lot and or, like, the drive-thru. And, like, she's having a fun time, you know? She's, like, cracking jokes. <laughs> and she's just going through and she's like, oh, what's my what's the time at now? It's like, oh, you, you're it's still at, like, uh, this time. And, like, okay, let me go around again. And they do that a couple times until the number's low. And I'm... I'm just standing there, like, my second day, and I'm like, oh, boy, I'm in a crazy place. I'm in a crazy place, guys. The no brakes was the first thing, and then the driving around in circles in the parking lot was the second thing. And also, every th everyone there steals constantly. <laughs> like, anytime the manager, like, turns her back, like, they always giving out free food like the someone's like boyfriend showed up and she's like oh hey you know you get you get the uh, you're he's secretly like a you know a CEO here you go here's a bunch of free food <laughs> or something i don't <laughs> know what the fudge they were trying to what kind of lies they were telling me to or they were like joking around they were they were stealing drinks and food all the time uh and it was great <laughs> cuz this is what happens when you treat your employees poorly and you don't give them breaks and you employ them at a place like a fat when you employ them at a fast food place and expect them to pay the rent with it and not give them any breaks then yeah th these things are going to happen you know it's like anyone who's taken any like business class or like leadership class would tell it could tell you this <laughs> it's not surprising and in addition to the drive through window timer, which they lie and cheat to get down, they also lie directly to the customers. Do we want to get on to this guy? Okay, so there, there is one guy in particular. One, one guy. One guy who is the guy. <laughs> and his name is insane. We're not going to say his actual name. But it it is a mon. We're gonna we're gonna use a pseudonym. We're gonna call him. Uh, we're gonna call him. I've already I, I wrote it down because it was is a good it's a good pseudonym. We're gonna call him Whopper Willie. <laughs> because it was no lie something close to that. I'm not. It's not even that much of an extended pseudonym. He like actually made people call him that, and he's. He's not a, he's kind of, you know, he's not, you know, he's like, he's, he's a, he's a character. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. He is definitely a character. And he, he was the one, I came in, he saw me, a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, knew this is my first fast food place, and he decided, I'm going to take you under my wing, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you the ropes, and I'm going to make you my apprentice, and then we're going to have something. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what his goal is. I know what his goal is. He wanted to boost his ego because he is uh, kind of arrogant. Because <laughs> the entire time, every time I, I had a shift with him, I groaned. Because, like, 
the entire time. He was looking over my shoulder. He was looking over my shoulder. He was like, you're not doing that right. You're not doing that right. Oh, you have to do this right. Oh, I, I've, I've been here like several decades and I, I know what I'm doing. So, you know, I'm going to show you everything. I'm going to show you how it's done. And literally, no, no matter how much time passed, there was never a moment where he stopped. I'm assuming it, there is a point where he stops because he doesn't heckle anyone else there. I'm, assume, I'm assuming that, like, seeing as how past jobs have gone, I'm assuming that, like, as soon as somebody new comes in, he's going to be like, okay, now I'm going to take this guy under my wing, you know? You just have to... That's my advice for people who are working at a crappy job. It's just, like, you'll not be the new guy soon enough, you know? You'll, you won't, like... <laughs> Once you get past, like, once you p get past the next wave of hiring and you get a new, new guy, then you, then you have, like, seniority, you know? It's just like anime. You got, you got the senpai, you got the kohai. Anyway. <laughs> well, this guy was really mean about it. He fought with the manager, too. Like, like, this isn't, like, him being, like, a coach and, like, telling, making sure that I do everything right. The man, like, the manager, anytime, uh, she saw him doing this, was like, hey, Whopper Willie. Get, stop bullying him <laughs> don't now maybe not those words exactly but you know something to that effect of like stop giving him crap he you know it's it's literally his third day working here <laughs> the reason i brought him up is that uh he lies <laughs> to customers because <laughs> like when you order a meal the fries and the drink come in a small a medium and a large order and obviously the large is bigger and more expensive and he said when i whenever i've done like the drive the taking orders for the drive through or uh taking orders at the f desk he's like okay whenever you ask for the size just say would you like a medium or large because it gives them the impression that we don't have a small and they're more likely to buy the more expensive drink oh boy oh boy and he tried to like, he tried to make it out like this wasn't his i like this wasn't his idea like the this like oh yeah the the manager said to do the manager said nothing about this the manager watched me take orders and say would you like a small medium or large with that or what size do you want, and she was fine with it but Whopper Willie he was like no nah, you you have to you have to upsell you have to upsell everything, which is like a thing. It is a thing. Everybody knows it's a thing. Anyone who's been to a fast food place and has her and has had been tirated by the effing I forget the word <laughs> uh, has been like effing tirated by the person at the front. Like, oh, do you do you want to do you want to drink with that? Do you want to make that a meal? Do you want do you want you know you want you want ham on that? Do you want you know want to make that? Do you want to have fries with that? Would you like fries with that? <laughs> You know, would you like to supersize that meal, sir? <laughs> like, that's a thing. Everybody knows it's a thing. But that's, like, a next level of thing. Like, lying to say that, like, the cheaper option... Pretending, like, the cheaper option doesn't exist. It's just, like, you're evil and you're taking advantage of people who aren't paying attention. Because that's... And it worked. It, that was the ter most awful part, is that it worked. I heard him go would you like a medium or large and then the customer was like um i don't know i guess a medium okay uh, anyway i like they're like in a hurry or something because like you know people like they're, they're, they're nobody hardly anyone buys fast food leisurely because like if you wanted to buy if you wanted to buy food leisurely then you wouldn't be at a fast food place right unless you just really like fast food and some fast food's okay you know shout out to wendy's <clears throat> Wendy's is exempt from all of this because I have bias. Except, you know, I'm sure Wendy's is just as bad. But shut up. Let me have my thing. I like eating there, so let me live in ignorance. So, anyway, people are already, like, in, like, a panicked state when they go there. So, like, and they're half paying attention anyway because sometimes they have, like, 20 screaming children in the back of their van. <laughs> So, like, yeah, it works, and it's awful, and I hate it, and I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it, guys. I didn't do it. I, I, I was like, I'll do a lot of things, but, you know, and if I needed to do it, you know, I've done I've done things like that before. If I needed to do it, I, I will do it. If the manager says, do this or you get fired, then I'm like, okay, I'll buckle. I'll tighten my bootstraps. Buckle my bootstraps? Do you buckle bootstraps? I don't know if I've ever worn, like, 
actual boots before. <laughs> anyway, so I'll buckle my bootstraps. I'll do it. But like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit this job anyway. So let's just like, let's keep my pride at the very least. And every time he heard me say small, medium, or large, he was like, hey, I told you before. And he gave me another 20 minute rant. Also, funny thing is he knows people. He knows pe the people don't like him because he's, quote, a know-it-all. <laughs> this Whopper Willie guy. Uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't care. He knows it anyway. And I told you he gets, fi he gets in fights with managers all the time. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I told you. I'm being personal. Hi, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> Achieve your goals. Live your life. Anyway, he gets in fights with managers all the time. Speaking of which... Uh, he made a Holocaust joke and then got into a uh, fight with a manager about it because the manager's like, uh, you can't just make Holocaust jokes at work. And he's like, what? We're all we're all playing around. We're all making friends. We're all, you know, whatever. And I'm like, no, we're here doing our jobs. OK, like if you're with like close friends and you all know you're all in on the joke or like, you know, you're, you're close friends and you know, you're not offensive or like in a formal situation at all. Then sure. You can, you can make some offensive jokes. <laughs> Just ask any of my friends. But if you're at work where like, there's like a wide pool of many different people from many different backgrounds and also like customers coming in with children, you can't just spout off crazy jokes. And then he also uh, called another employee gay at one point, and then the manager yelled at him about that. And that was that was that was the highlight of the job, by the way. I know I mentioned earlier how I didn't spend a single second in joy there, but I almost felt joy after uh, having a Whopper Willie ca castrate me. I think that's the word. I don't think that's the word. Castrate is definitely not the word. After having Whopper Willie uh, tide raid me all day. I feel like it begins with a P. I'm crazy. I definitely have to Google that later because I'm drawing a blank. This is what happens when you get an unstructured rant. So anyway, yeah, it was really great to, to uh, you know, I almost felt joy after listening to a Whopper Willie give me crap for like five hours and then hearing the manager yell at him. <laughs> He's also one of those guys who like I was serving someone at the I was giving someone their food at the uh, drive through window and he like as I was taking giving her her food, uh, what Whopper Willie whispered in my ear, "Hey, is she hot?" And I'm like, I'd have no response to that. <laughs> my exact response was, "Uh, kinda." I'm like, my brain was like half trying to process that, and he's like, "Oh, what do you mean, mean kinda?" And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Like people value hotness in different ways, like. <laughs> What some people consider hot is not what other people consider hot. And I don't, like, we've been working for, like, two days, so I don't know what you would consider hot. So I cannot properly, like, regardless of the fact of this, if this is appropriate for work or not, which is not, like, I can't even answer that question properly. <laughs> even though I knew what he meant. You know, the stereotypical, like, oh, hot girl, you know? But, you know, whatever. I made I made my point. I made my point. The last thing I'll say about Whopper Willie is that uh, he just hates everybody. <laughs> no, I I have a couple more things to say about Whopper Willie. There was a there was a I was uh like making like small talk to a customer because it's not like I hated every second of it, but like you you guys know me. You you know me. I I when I do something, if you don't know me, you know now that when I do something i do it the best i do i put my everything into it you know i do not have the ability to half ass something you know i found that out about myself that if either i do something and put everything i have into it or i just don't do it i learned this when i went to uh study abroad for college in japan and uh my advisor was like you don't have to worry about grades my advisor was crazy by the way <laughs> Uh, I'm I yeah, I like that guy. Don't worry about it. He was cool, but he's like you don't have to worry about grades while you're there because they'll count as transfer credits and they'll just the the grades won't be saved. It'll just be like you'll just get the credits, so they won't count. They won't count up or down at all. So as long as you get a C, then you'll they'll transfer over and you'll keep your GPA. And I'm like, cool. And then I go there and I try, and uh, <laughs> I get all A's anyway, because like. 
if I'm given an assignment and I'm like, well, let's just write this assignment and then I just can't stop, <laughs> you know? There was one part where uh, I had to, like, write something about, like, water or, like, undersea life or something and I had a, an interesting idea because I, I just like writing, you know? <laughs> as evidenced by uh that i work on anime blogs not as much as i would but you know i just like writing so i had i had a fun way to uh make a research thing about it and i did all this thing and i did all this work and then i'm like cool i got i got an a on it sick and then the next paper i half ass and i also get an a on it and i'm like okay you know what never mind <laughs> Or maybe I didn't half-ass it. Maybe that was, like, an actual A, and I just, like, you know, my standards are higher than others. But I don't know. I got all A's when I was in Japan. I can't half-ass things. So, like, I was talking to this customer, and I was, like, making small talk. I was doing being nice. I was doing my job well. Because even though I didn't like it, I was morally object to the whole system. I was like, uh, well, while I'm here, I might as well do it well, right? So anyway, I was making small talk to this customer, and then she said something about uh, about having a gender neutral name, and how uh, that's like important nowadays. And then Whopper Willie comes up from behind me and goes, "Ah, oh, you know, you know, I don't, I don't care about that. You know, we don't, we don't need, you know, we don't, I don't, you know, we don't need, you know. Back in my day, it was man and woman, and that was it. And I'm like, okay, listen, listen, that this is a customer." <laughs> This is a customer and trying, trying to be, I'm trying to be nice and you're making this weird and that, that person's probably never coming back, <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Whopper Willie was crazy. I also hated the, uh, the headset, like, oh, the working conditions there weren't great because they had, uh. Because I, when I told you, I said that uh, I didn't get my break because the manager's like, we don't have anyone to replace you. And that's when I found out that that uh, restaurant, that not restaurant, I feel bad. I feel unjust calling it a restaurant. That fast food place is horribly understaffed. And I'm like, well, with people like Whopper Willie there, <laughs> I don't, I'm not surprised. And this quickly became apparent because there was like, Two or three people at most doing, like, five different jobs. <laughs> and you were expected to just switch from one job to another. Which, again, is just a any, like, minimum wage job. You know, it's not, like, unexpected. <laughs> it's just, like, well, sometimes you have to do that, you know? When your job can be done by anyone, then anyone has to do it, right? <laughs> Including robots. By the way, the Taco Bell has uh, robots. Why can't we get robots? Why can't they get robots? I already quit, by the way. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying they... Why don't they have robots? Well, I haven't technically quit, but, you know. As of now, I haven't technically quit, but we'll, we'll get into that in a second. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, the working conditions are terrible, uh, and I just have to go around constantly. I had to run around constantly all the time. And, uh, and I only knew how to do, like, one or two things. So anytime that, like, something came up that I nobody else was able to do and I had to, I just, like, gave it a good old college try. <laughs> and uh, just tried it. And then Whopper Willie came behind me and was like, what are you doing? That's not how you do that. I'll show you how to do it. And then he it was like, here, dragged me over. <laughs> He also, like, made a comment about, like, my belt. Like, he touched my belt and was like, oh, I, I don't, you have a, your belt's, like, sticking out. You need another looper in that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, I need a new one. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, it was just, like, whatever. Like, they, they were like, you need a black belt. And I'm like, uh, I only have, like, one black belt from when I was, like, fat. <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily fit me properly. Oh, yeah, no, I had to cut a new hole in it was the issue. <laughs> And it's not meant to, uh, it has a lot of extra slack on it because of it. But, uh, yeah, he just, he, when he made that comment, he grabbed my belt. That's apparently an American thing, by the way. Like, people, people in America especially value their, uh, private space, apparently. Because <laughs> in preparation for going to Japan and spreading culture, I've done some research. I went, I looked up, like, a, like a foreign tour guide of, like, Hi guys, I'm European and I'm going to make I'm going to tell you what you need to know before visiting America and I and one of the things was like Americans like their personal space stay away. 
<laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you're right. You know what? You're right. Now that I think about it, you're right. And that's the culture I grew up in. So, uh, yeah, no, that made me feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Especially that since I didn't like the guy anyway. <laughs> you know, that, that, that helps. Or that doesn't help. That helps make my point about how, uh, stop touching my belt. Don't, don't touch my belt. Guys! Guys! Don't touch my belt. It's currently, like, in the middle of the night, so I probably shouldn't be screaming that much, but whatever. So, let's get to why I quit. Because I was originally planning to do it until the day I left for Japan. But there are a couple reasons why I quit. Not just the crappy working conditions. Because I've had crappier working conditions. I've worked at the flower place, you know? And the flower place was awful. And I worked at it for, like, seven months? It was, like two years for like three and a half months each and i didn't need the money i don't know why i continued going there i just did it to prove a point because like the the first year that i did it was fine it was like okay it was already kind of bad because it was it was in the summer it was like late spring early summer because that's when flowers grow apparently or that's when people want to buy flowers and it was like back back breaking work it was constantly just like lifting heavy pots of flowers from one end of the store to the other all day at nauseum at nauseum till you're sick <laughs> uh so that was awful and it was also like in 90 degree weather which was which was also awful like i came home every day like just red because you know i'm very white i'm not that white am i white i'm kind of white i'm like part greek so like you know there's there's that flex for you even though i don't do a lot of like greek things so that's more like a fun fact rather than a part about me i don't know i do some greek things my my grandmother cooked greek food all the time back in the day you know and i went to i went to a greek restaurant the other day does that count uh hero pale <laughs> anyway uh point aside yeah so i came back toasted and then so that was only for like the first uh three and a half months the next year for the next three and a half months um they moved me because like they're like okay we don't need anyone there but if you want to continue working here you have to go like a 40 minutes away <laughs> and i'm like oh that's awful but i just learned how to drive <laughs> so i'm like fine i have i know how to drive i like because it was like i learned how to drive that winter and then I got this job, like, in, like, uh, early spring. Or, like, I restarted the job in early spring. So, uh, the positive of that was, is I got used to driving. Because before then, like, I, I got my license. But I just never used it. Because I'm, like, I'm afraid of driving. I don't want to drive down to the store. Because I might die. But, like, just driving, like, for two hours every day, five days a week. For, like, three and a half months. Just, like... Now I'm just now driving doesn't feel like anything to me, which is a tip for anyone, by the way. Any any young drivers out there, that's how you do it. You just you just get used to it by just doing it constantly. Anyway, yeah, so that was awful. And also the manager, the, they, they changed managers in addition to changing the stores. Or, yeah, no, I think they changed managers and I changed stores. So it was a new person and that new person hated me for no reason. <laughs> Like the manager at the at the the fast food place at the Burger King, like she like she didn't give me breaks and was awful, but like she was nice, right? Like she didn't hate me. My nursery job did hate me, <laughs> and I worked there longer. <laughs> and it was still like ninety degree back breaking work. I was uh, kind of awful, <laughs> but I did it. I kept at it because I had no reason to quit, and I wanted to make some money. Get build my work ethic, even though I pretty I already I have a fine work ethic. I have a good work ethic, you know. I've I have a super high GPA and have like zero absence days, but I just wanted to prove it anyway. And I know this is I know people are still gonna call, I know people are still gonna call me lazy. People are like, oh I I had to work I had to walk fifty miles in the snow every day uphill both ways somehow. <laughs> Uh, but that's the thing. Everybody has it worse. You know, pain is relative. 
but the intensity of the job isn't why I quit, despite me complaining about it. Complaining is just fun. But uh, the real thing is I was going to quit soon anyway. Like, because my plan was I was going to quit anyway. Like, if this was not, like, more than, like, a three-week thing. It just turned into, like, a little over one-week thing. Uh, because, A, it was... It was awful. Like, that was a part of it. But it wasn't the only part. And also, like, the money that I thought I needed lowered. Because originally they were like, okay, you're not going to get paid until the end of the first month. So you need to live for a month. And now I'm hearing uh, the 21st, not the 31st. And that's, like two and a half weeks so like sick <laughs> you know i can and also like if i really need to like i can just not have internet or like power for like okay maybe i need power but you know i don't need like things like internet or air conditioning or like running water i re you really technically don't need running water you know well yeah no you need running water <laughs> Because I was thinking, like, you could just go to the grocery store to go to the bathroom, right? If you really need to. But I was thinking, well, I don't know if two and a half weeks I could survive without any water. Because I would eventually need to take a shower anyway, or I would get fired. That would be considered unfit for the job. <laughs> but yeah, I, I could cut back, back on expenses. I could just download, like, 100 hours of anime or more. And then just for the first, like, two and a half weeks, just not have internet. I'm willing to do that. I've done worse, but that's not even, that's still not even like the, the main reason. That was like what gave me the ability. The real main reason is, um, I have friends and family in America and I'm leaving for Japan. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not coming back. It, it'll be a lot different than, uh, when I went for college, when college was like easy, I was just there for like a year and, uh, yeah, I was like right back immediately. But here I'm I'm leaving and I'm I'm not I'm not really planning on coming back. Uh I'm contracted for one year, but uh I think it can be extended up to five and then I and then from then on, who knows, I might stay in Japan or come back or whatever. But the point is I'll be gone a while and my family is crying and like I know that like no matter how much time I spend with my friends and family, it's not gonna be enough. Uh, but I don't want to feel like I wasted it pointlessly, right? Like, I don't want to have, like, a regret of, like, I could have spent more time. We could have done more things before I left, but we didn't, you know? I want to feel like, okay, well, we did everything. It's not, it's never enough, but we did everything, you know? But, like, you know, they're, they're not, they'll be fine. I don't want people to, I'm not trying to turn this into a, a pity party, you know? I'm not trying to turn this into the official Fireboy pity party, Po uh, podcast Pit official fireboy pity party podcast no that is that is another podcast that i might make another podcast called fireboys pity party podcast because it's a really good name for a podcast but no they we have like skype and video call and even when i went there for a year it wasn't that bad and it might be and it will even be better because i won't have a roommate that won't let me do skype calls in at 3 a.m <laughs> Like, but you know, so then it'll be it'll be free, and they're already planning to visit me for Christmas, you know, and it'll be fun, it'll be great. But they are sad about like they want to spend as much time with me as possible, you know. Fire mom, uh, just wants 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 to spend time with their son before she leaves. He leaves forever, you know, before before her bird leaves the nest and soars off into the great beyond. And, uh, gets addicted to heroin or something. <laughs> uh, mother, if you're listening, uh, I can guarantee you I'm not going to get addicted to heroin while I'm in Japan. Mostly because, uh, Japan's, uh, drug laws are pretty strict. <laughs> but also because I'm a good person, right? Anyway. But yeah, I think that was, like, the main thoughts. I'm like, well, if I don't need the money, if I hate working there, and if working there is hurting my family... Uh, then, yeah. <laughs> Why be there? But if it ended there, then it would just be white boy complains about doing manual labor. Which, like, I am, but, like, that's not necessarily the point. The point is, is that, um, I have the ability to quit. Like, just because I have the ability to quit doing a crappy job doesn't mean 
that it disappears like it disappears from my life but as i said earlier like i know that it exists around me that it exists outside of my circle of knowledge and like at some point you have to like cut that off you can't just be like because if you follow that train of thought then you're like okay well how can i live at all when there's starving children when there's literally people dying on the streets like every second of every day you know it really you really have to like cut your you only have so much compassion to give to the world but like being in this being like a part of it really makes me like think like well i'm able to quit i'm i'm privileged to be able to attend a, a school and get a job or i'm privileged to be able to get a job you don't necessarily need school to get a job if depending on what your job is going to be but me specifically my the job that i wanted required a college education but anyway i was privileged to have another job and also skilled it's like a combination of privilege and skill because like i was privileged enough to get into the uh college but like i still had to work my butt off i had to i had to to get, get maintain good grades do work constantly find a job get scholarships all the time you know it's a half between like skill and privilege you know you need both you know that's just how the world works it's not just one way or the other you know and depending on how much you have of one yeah you might need more than one than the other but i think at least for me it's it's at least like 50 50 Maybe a little bit more privilege than skill, but definitely, like, if I just sat on my ass, nothing would happen, right? But if you have no privilege, no, it doesn't matter how much skill you have. You're gonna, you're gonna end up at one of these, one of these jobs, you know? And I know that sounds heart, heart terrible, but like, you know, uh, hold on, I'm trying to, I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> there are people you can enjoy a job like that you know like i know uh people who like work at like part-time or like minimum wage jobs who like enjoy their job and get some sort of satisfaction out of it and like that they ha enjoy that kind of life and i give and i have given those people nothing but respect man if you can like as long as what as long as you're happy then that's you're happy you know but not everybody is there is happy, you know? There's a lot, I'm lucky enough to be like, okay, I hate this, I'm leaving. But there's some people who like have to pay the bills, feed kids with a fast food job, you know? And that's really what I'm complaining about. I'm not complaining about um, that I have to do manual labor, cause like, whatever. I'm complaining the fact that like, we live in a world that allows this to happen, you know, cause there's not just one Burger King. There's not just one Whopper Willy. There's a zillion of them. There's a zillion million of them. There's a billion million gorillion of them. But uh, you know what something? That's part of the reason why I want to be a teacher. Why I want to be, a t I want to help people. I want to make the world a better place because I can't just look at this look at all these miserable people and be like, well, what can you do? You know, Shogunai, you know, I want to help people. I want to go there. I want to not, not, not like go there and like help people specifically, but I want to do something to make the world a better place. You know, I want to, which is why I'm being a teacher because I feel like being a teacher is a major, a, a teacher is a very, vital vital role a very important role in someone's life because you know a good teacher can inspire a good teacher can encourage a good teacher can can give the push to go out and achieve your dreams and not and not end up at a job that you hate but a bad teacher can do the opposite and i've, I've had both guys i've had both i've had i've had good i've had bad I've had teachers that are like abandon your dreams, <laughs> work at Burger King, and I've had teachers that have inspired. But so I'm like, man, if I if and I like teaching, you know, I like I like uh getting up here and spreading my knowledge to the world.
So if that's something I can do to give back to the world and make the world a better place and minimize, because it's not like, you know, like everybody knows this. Everybody knows that the world is terrible and awful. Like there was like a, there was a fudging uh, last week tonight like, on the mainstream media, like just the other week about how Amazon employees are being tortured to death and getting maced with bear spray or whatever's going on down there. And so like, and I know that, like, I have friends who work at places like that, and I, uh, I hear, I hear some horror stories, <laughs> but, uh, and obviously, like, working in a similar place, you know, fast, fast, people have to suffer, <laughs> but, like, that's just, people know, people know, people know, is all I'm saying, people know that, like, if you want to have these nice things, then something has to give, and when, people with a lot of money are in power then and people with not a lot of money are not in power then it's pretty obvious who gets the short end of the stick in that situation but i do believe that like people can push on people can like there might there are some people who depending on the choices that they make and depending on the motivation that they feel and depending on the you know the people who inspire them that they can that they will either end up at one place or the other you know so even if I'm not doing in the grand schemes, I'm not fixing the society and the structures that are making this world a terrible place. I can help. I can help on a more personal level, which is what I really like doing. You know, this is just turning into why I want to be a teacher, because I like helping people and I like personal connections and relationships. And you know, I talked about being socially awkward. But you know what really helped me back in the day when I was a, a socially awkward little kid? People being nice to me. Anyone being nice to me, you know? Like, anyone who was, like, who was willing to extend an olive branch, who was like, hey, what's up? We're, we're, willing to, we're willing to, you know, at least humor you for a few minutes or we're willing to be nice to you or be your friend. That, meant, that means a lot to me, you know? If I, if I could do that, if I could go to uh, – if I can go into a school and, you know – uh, make a make someone make someone's day happy, you know, make someone smile. Then I'm like, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing my part, you know, I'm doing my part. Ugh. I want to be a teacher, not a burger surf, <laughs> which is what I am doing. So you know, it's quite good. It's quite good. And they still haven't let me quit, by the way. I might, I'm, I'll make an addendum to this later, but like, I called them up. And they're, I'm like, hey, I quit. And then they're like, uh, I'm just, I'm just a fill-in manager. You have to talk to somebody. And I'm like, okay, fine. Call back another day. Hi, I quit. And they're like, why? And I'm like, uh, I don't know, cause I hate working there. And they're like, you have to talk to somebody else. And I'm like, uh, so I'm just gonna go in tomorrow, with my, sh with my uniform, and just throw it behind the counter and leave, <laughs> and try to get my last paycheck. And then I will go off. And I will make the world a better place. I'll make a child smile. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how you would be able to take that out of context. Cause, uh, child murderers uh, do not make children happy. Maybe they make them smile when they're like, hey, you want some free candy? But, you know, not, not a lot. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm more invested in the long term, you know? <laughs> That's why I'm a teacher. is because I'm, I'm invested in the long term happiness, not the short term. Uh, I want to make I want to make people happy. I want to make the world a better place. I'm ranting at this point, but uh, that's kind of what you signed up for when you clicked on when you clicked on this podcast. When you when you when you I said yes, I would like to watch this. You know. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I don't even know if this will uh, make it to the actual internet because it's very ranty and very like. I'm going to post this. If I, When and if I do post this, people are definitely going to be like, hey, look at this guy. He's a whiny baby. And then people that I know are like, uh, your job employers might find this and think you're a bad person. And I'm like, really? Did they, did they listen to the end? If they listen to the end, they'll find out that I – they will find general – general – if they listen to the end, they will find genuine passion and love for doing – what I want to do, you know? But yeah, that was it. I hope uh, you all enjoyed uh, this very long rambling rant that I hopefully can save in the editing bay. <laughs>
because <laughs> it is it is currently gone on like for over an hour and i don't think uh, it should be over an hour <laughs> so uh we'll see we'll see what's what's going with that but uh you know this is new experimental content that i'm making so uh you know because one of my like most popular videos i've made recently is like just like general update and talking about my life so uh people care about that you know people people want, are like invested in narratives you know people who who've been around for a while are like Ooh, yes, I'm I'm interested in what Fireboy's doing, you know. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. I I <laughs> I'm being angry at the world, but I'm like, you know what? I can I can fix it. I can I can be I can go out there. I can make the world a better place. So I think that's what we can learn today is that you know the world is awful and terrible, but we have the power to change it. We on the personal level, even if it's only a tiny bit, we have the power to make the world a better place. So even if it's awful now, we can achieve a brighter tomorrow or something to that effect. But for now, see you all in the next one. Bye!